Good morning, everyone. Here we are again back in Minnesota. And yes, we have snow, even though it is April. Um, thank you all for joining in on these Facebook Lives. My name is Paige Johnson, and I'm here in my studio all by myself, but that's okay because I'm doing what I love. And I'm playing with fabrics and quilts. And when this is all done, I'm hoping I'm going to be just as busy as I was before. Now, we have a large studio. I have five Statlers here. Generally, I have staff. Last year, we averaged 106 quilts a month. That's a lot of quilts, but it's also a lot of leftover batting. And I know we all have things that we can do with our batting. Uh, we cut up small squares to clean the rails and to dust the machines. That doesn't take a lot, though. So what we've been doing with our batting, and uh, we leave it up to the customers. Uh, I'd say 99% of the customers give us their leftover batting. What we do with that is we splice it together to make Franken-bats, kind of like Frankenstein, but it's all with batting. And we put those into donated uh, charity quilts. Uh, we have a charity that we work for here making uh, long twin full-size quilts for a home that is home to kids 18 to 25. Most of them have aged out of foster care or, for whatever reason, find themselves alone and on the streets. It gives them a place to live and to learn some life skills. We also have five other different charities that we do quilts for. We'll quilt them here in the studio, and we're using our leftover batting. So I'd like to show you how I splice batting. So I'm going to put you up in my little stand I made. Let's see, so you can see what I see down here. Okay, here we go. I've got some leftover batting, and this is a smaller piece. Same thing, you can do exactly the same thing with a large one, but this one will work well for us. Now, lucky for me, I have one edge that I can see down here that is square and straight. That was the end of the roll on the edge. <laughs> Sorry about that. My son was calling me. <laughs> I'm going to make him... I just shut him off. I'll call him back. I'm going to fold this along that line. And then I'm going to lay it out on my board here so that I can make sure that I am square along this side. I don't know if you can see that or if I have to move up a bit. This is my folded edge. And this was the edge that was square off the roll. Then I'm going to be using some of my larger cutting squares. If I put this one right down here, I can tell that I'm nice and square to my edge here and here. And then I'm going to use another ruler butting right up against that. If I have to, I can move this down slightly, but I know I'm keeping square along the edge here. And then I'm going to cut that edge off. I can move my ruler up, and I'm still butted up against this one. Oh, except don't cut into your ruler you have on the mat. Yeah, we've all done it. Not fun, but we've all done it. So there I've got now three squared edges. And I would do the same thing on the other side. And moving this up, up and over... Good thing I'm a long arm quilter, huh? And then I'll slide that down. All these little scraps that we take off, we put them into a bin and they go into beds for the Animal Humane Society. 
I uh, was given a donation of curtains from the children's theater that were like, oh, I'd say 28 feet long, and a nice heavy drapery fabric, and we've been making dog beds, and this is what goes in them, these little scraps. So nothing goes to waste here. Now that I've got my batting squared, I can then start to splice it together. Now there's a couple of ways to do that. Many of you, I'm sure, have seen the fusible tape. And to do that, you would need batting, and I'm using a very small piece here. Let's see if I can move you down so you can see what I'm doing better. Yeah, you can see. I'm going to butt these edges together as best I can. And I have got uh, some fusible here. Sticky side down, obviously. And then I would press this together. I like to use a Teflon pressing sheet if I do that so that uh, I don't get the fusible any place I don't want and I don't overly melt my batting. I did that for a number of years, but I found, and I don't know if you can see here, these pieces didn't always go together exactly. And I could actually feel that little gap in there. So one of the things that I'm trying to do now is to sew my batting together. What I'll do is I'll butt up the edges together and they go under the zigzag foot of my domestic sewing machine. And when it's done, I'm using a stitch that is three stitches over three stitches to the left, three stitches to the right. I can't even feel the difference if I close my eyes. Here's a good close-up picture of that done with red thread. I would strongly encourage you not to use red thread or even yellow. That has a tendency to show up as well. I will splice batting this way all the different kinds, even poly works well. The one I don't splice that way is wool. And I'm going to show you how we do our wool. And we do that by hand. I can be either on the machine or off. I need a cut edge. I'll put two cut edges together, one on top of the other. I'm using red thread, but again, I wouldn't recommend it. So I'm going to go in and I'm just doing a very quick whip stitch going over about a half an inch and taking about an inch, quarter inch bite inside. And so I'm doing those two together. Once I go across the whole row, I open them up and tug. And this creates a ladder stitch across the batting and you can't feel that one either and once it's quilted into your quilt sandwich you'll never know the difference many times we get quilts that might be longer than the width of our batting so splicing batting is not out of the question for everyday use and if you want to make franken bats the franken bats that we use um, are very worthwhile because I'd rather use that batting than to put it into the landfill. Well, I hope you enjoyed this and try and make some Franken bats at home. You don't have to dust that often. Besides, dusting's not that much fun. Make a Franken bat instead. Thanks for watching.